Hello everyone, my name is Lambert and here we will see how CRC is fingerprinting and managing its germplasm collection. Okay, so this, this work is not possible without several contributions from persons over various years, and the assistance is greatly appreciated. You would have seen from previous pre presenters that the Gene Bank um, at in, as International Cocoa Gene Bank at the University Cocoa Research Station has five, five main fields and uh, with over 2,300 accessions. Each accession um, either belongs to one of the 10 populations of cocoa or has mixed ancestries on two or more populations. The Cocoa Research Center also has cocoa geoplasm on, on campus distributed across various fields and in the greenhouse. So in general, what we expect is that in a plot in which is a safety duplication of four to 16 trees, that every single tree is identical to each other. We also expect that each accession to be genetically different from each other, but this may not be the case. And indeed we can have uh, a variety of, of possibilities or scenarios where we can have more than one genotype within a plot. And CRC needs to determine the genetic fingerprint of every single tree of every single accession. So how do we do this? Well, first, uh, leaf samples from every tree is carefully collected and recorded. And then Leaf this are prepared from each leaf, placed in a multi well plate, and sent to LGC uh, for genotyping. The genotyping uses 192 single nucleotide polymorphisms or SNPs. And this service is available from the Cocoa Research Center uh, for clients worldwide, where we'll compare your cocoa profiles to our, our reference profiles. The Return data is then coded to represent the four bases of DNA. And the profiles across all the SNPs for every single tree is then compared against each other. Here, every row represents a single tree and every SNP marker is across two columns. So you can see we have cases of similarities and cases of differences. And when we compare across all 192 SNPs, we can get four genetically different accessions, a distinct combination of profiles. So here now, what we will have is a five-step process of what we need to do. And at each stage, you will, you will obtain or see um, what we consider guidelines for cocoa identity analysis and geoplasm management. So first on the platform reliability. In order to determine or to use the SNP profiles properly, we need to know the genotyping error of the platform. How reliable are the results? Well, what we found was that within a job, there was a very high repeatability in that only one, any one SNP from very few accessions for any one sample return a different result for that same sample. However, when it compared across different jobs, there were 10 cases where there were a mismatch of four SNPs for the same recollected sample. This means that we must apply a flexibility mismatch of four SNPs when it compare accession profiles or genotype profiles across different jobs. So, Move on out to plot mixture. All the profiles for plots containing more than one tree were compared within plots. And we applied 
the rule of four, a flexibility mismatch of four steps. So if we have two trees and we compare to it at 192 SNPs, four of which return different results, we will consider those two trees to be the same. If they match perfectly at the 192 SNPs, then we call them identical. If they mismatch at five or more SNPs, we call them different. At the University of the West Indies campus, we had 187 cases of accessions with more than one tree in more than one location. And it was found that 29% of these were mixed. At the International Cocoa Gene Bank, we had 1,298 cases and of these 21% were mixed and 79% were uniform. Now the majority of the accessions on campus have been, have been completed. We just have one more field to do. And in the gene bank, we have about 40% um, being completed. So we took all the samples from the plots, reduced it to their representative genotypes. Okay, so we end up with 2,727 samples across 1,926 accessions. And we now compared these accession profiles to each other. And with the flexibility mismatch of four SNPs, we created 468 duplicate groups. These 468 duplicate groups contain accessions that are either perfectly matched each other across all the SNPs, um, or match with some missing data, or match mismatch at one to four SNPs with or without missing data. At the end, we had about 1,843 unique samples at 180 SNPs with as near complete information as possible. Here now we see uh, a special case. And this case can be used to guide what we need to do uh, for gene bank conservation in terms of typing the trees to obtain the correct profiles. This particular accession had two trunks. You can see one on the left hand side and one on the right hand side. When the genotype both trunks, they were different. One was from the Maranian population group and the other was a hybrid between the Stabina, Amalanado, and Priola groups. So we now faced with two decisions, which is the correct profile, and what do we do with the off-type? Well, if the off-type has a valuable phenotype, then it can be propagated uh, and maintained as a distinct accession. In the same way, when we have the gene bank plots and we end up with a plot with a mixed, with a mixed situation, we can have three possible genotypes within a plot. What do we do with the two genotypes that are different? First, we need to ensure that the correct genotype for that accession is retained. That could be the genotype with the one tree, the genotype with the two trees, or the genotype with the seven trees. Once we establish which one it is we want to use, then providing the other phenotypes have no um, valuable, other genotypes, sorry, have no valuable phenotypes. What we can do is remove those trees to create a uniform plot and then introduce or reintroduce the correct propagated material to fill in the uh, missing positions in that plot. So we then took uh, the 1,794 samples from the International Cocoa Gene Bank that were unique profiles and checked their ancestry. And we found that 351 of these, or about 20%, were of pure ancestry, in which it belonged at more than 95% membership to any one population and there was not, not more than 2.5% in any other population. <clears throat> if we look at the pure populations, we're able to see their distribution across the 10 populations of cocoa, from Amalanado to Cruz. And you can see why we have nice uh, substantial contributions 
from the Amalanado, <coughs> Guyana, Iquitos, Marañon, National and Nani. Um, two groups in particular are severely underrepresented. And these are the Creole and the Peruse groups. So this means that CLC and the Jinma by extension should obtain or seek to obtain um, distinct accessions genetically different from what we already have for members within the Creole group and the Peruse group. It does mean that the national here represents a key source. The national cocoa is one of the fine flavor groups of cocoa. And therefore it's important to conserve this group at the ICGT to make sure that is not lost um, uh, from its home habitats in Ecuador. The national group has also given us um, uh, CRC and the government of Trinidad and Tobago some key leverage. These members can be placed into a separate field and then um, Darren and the flavor team can, ac can assess the chocolates uh, prepared from these trees. We now look at whether the unique profiles could be reduced into a minimal set. So core collection. Core collections are subsets of the entire collection that best represents the genetic diversity. So three core collections were prepared. One core collection was based on ancestry and about 100 samples were, uh, were randomly selected with about 10 for each ancestral group. Um, then, in a completely objective procedure, the core collection uh, was prepared using a software uh, by name of PowerCore. Uh, and this had 98 samples, and I introduced two additional to make up 100 samples. From the core collection, a mini core collection was created in which 30 random samples were selected from the core created from the power core software. And when we compare these groups to each other, we found that the group differentiation values were low between zero to 0 0.008, but significant. Um, but surprisingly, the mini core was not significantly different from any of the other core collections or the entire collection. So in, this, in the gridded square, you would see shaded blocks, and the shaded blocks represent the significant um, differences as paired comparisons. So what we've seen for cocoa identity analysis is a sort of guiding principle. What would we need to do for geobasm collections? But first, we need a correct um, panel. We must use this panel across all the trees of all the accessions in the gene bank. We must um, determine and implement a flexibility rule. We must use repeat typing to reduce missing data. If accessions are still too closely matched, then we must identify a panel to separate these closely matched accessions. We can assess multiple chunks if we see phenotypic differences. We can propagate off tags as needed and maintain these as new accessions. And probably um, very importantly, these last three points, the reference accessions for cocoa, cocoa names, the names of the particular cocoa accessions or varieties must come from the universal gene banks or as far as possible from the earliest known gene bank. It does mean that we're not going with a popular view in that if we have accession distributed worldwide, the most popular profile is not used as a reference profile for that accession. Instead, it must be the profile um, maintained and kept within the gene bank that has the earliest known best version of that accession. All research projects that use the gene bank material should include a fingerprinting course within its um, budget to help offset the genotyping cost. And probably the most important of all, all plants, whether in the greenhouse or in the field, should be a unique label. So 
how, how is this going to work for us? How are we going to use it? Well, knowing the correct uh, genotypes means we have known identities. And these known identities uh, are useful for persons uh, who want to use particular cultivars. For example, Caleb in his cadmium work, David in Ijiwa's work, work, or Dr. Lennon in his photosynthesis work. We also know we can get better identification of farmer material by having the correct profiles across a variety, a wide diverse array of reference genotypes. And this helps our global clients. And of course, we have um, proper geoplasm management in having a more efficient way to manage the collection. This, this work here is not possible without the, the intervention of several donors, local and international. And we thank them for their continued collaboration. I hope that you've enjoyed this presentation and all the other presentations, and we hope to see you again next year.